see what was happening. Everybody, put the money on the counter. Now! Come on! Do it! Nobody moves except to hand over the money. I thought, how can I recognize this guy if I lose him in a crowd? I studied his mannerisms, the tone of his voice, and made mental notes from top to bottom. But before I could do anything, I had to confront him away from innocent bystanders so that he had no chance of taking hostages. Nobody follows me, and nobody gets hurt! He was moving pretty fast, but I managed to stay about 30 feet behind him. He kept checking over his shoulder, but he didn't see me. I didn't want him to know anyone was following him. This was a busy shopping day, and there were a lot of people outside. It occurred to me that he might have an accomplice, so I started looking over my shoulder. My intention was to follow him away from the public, get his license number if he had a car, and to call for assistance on my car radio, hopefully setting up a roadblock to catch him and placing the odds on my side. But he had another idea. The minute I reached for the radio, he stopped behind a truck, bent over, put on a pair of glasses and did an about face, and started walking right back towards me. If I was going to avoid a potential hostage situation, I couldn't let him back into that mall. State police officer, don't move! I thought to myself, if that gun comes out, you're dead, pal. I was carrying a 357 revolver with plenty of firepower. Stop or I'll shoot! An armed robbery just went down in the Key Bank Mall. Suspect is a white male, late 20s, 6'3", 240 pounds, wearing jeans. Plaid shirt, tan jacket, dark rim glasses. I am in pursuit. I managed to get a glimpse of him before he disappeared further into the store. Unit 13, Augusta. Suspect has entered department store. I'm going in after him. I'm the only one who can ID him. Then I spotted John Poria, an off-duty state trooper that I knew. John. John. Lieutenant, what's up? Chasing the guy who just robbed the bank. He just went into the department store. I've been on the radio to headquarters. You maintain communication from my car. Send the units that arrive in through these doors. I kept my gun out of sight because I didn't want to scare anyone and made my way over to the nearest salesman. Hi. I'm looking for a friend of mine. He's, uh, he's a big guy wearing a tan jacket uh, over a red plaid shirt. Uh, I think he went down by the lighting fixtures. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sauce. He had ditched his jacket and glasses, attempting to change his disguise again. Want to have another look at it? Yeah, I, I just can't seem to make up my mind. Well, uh, for the type of work that you want to do, this one is ideal. And like I said before, it's got all the bells and whistles. Yeah? Yeah, and it's 20% off. You never get a better buy than this. Uh, I've just been looking at them before, you know, but uh, I guess I should seriously consider picking one up. Thanks. State police, put your hands up. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Shut up. Put your hands above your head. Turn around slowly. I didn't have any handcuffs with me, so all I could do was keep him pinned didn't down. Do anything. Stay quiet. Then I saw anything. two Augusta police officers that I knew approaching me from behind panic. <laughs> Get 
wondering when you guys were going to get here. Come on. Let's get him out of here. Now, wait a minute. We forgot something. Where's the gun? In the bag. We found Fanning's ski mask and jacket stashed in a nearby freezer. The paper bag held over $10,000 and the fully loaded gun containing nine rounds. It turned out the same bank had been robbed five months earlier. The investigation also revealed Fanning was responsible for that robbery. The tellers couldn't believe it was him because he had gained 40 pounds between the robberies. I felt fully confident to control the situation, to take my time and make an effective arrest. When I did, it was a very gratifying feeling. In a moment, undercover narcotics officer Norman Presley and one night in the war on drugs.